The new Hollow Hulls update for Enshrouded is amazing. Primarily the dungeons themselves, which you can now find in each biome, as they come with new enemies to beat, building blocks to hunt for, and also unique gear to get your hands on. I just completed all four dungeons, including the final one for level 25 in the Kindle Waste area. So guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Foriam, and in today's Ultimate Hollow Halls Guide, I'm going to share everything you want to know to clear these yourself with a very simple build with all the essential skills, gear, useful tips to make clearing and farming these dungeons easy mode. Deal with a new Cyclops boss, clear mobs fast and efficient, and get your hands on a ton of ectoplasm and gear while you're at it. So what are we waiting for? Let's get right to it. A quick reminder, as G Portal partner, I can give you a sweet discount on servers. Be sure to check out my link in the description down below if you want to pick up your own for a shrouded or any of your favorite games to play together with friends. Anyways, let's get straight down to business. So I'm currently level 25, as you can see right here, which is recommended if you're planning to do the Kindle Waste dungeon. Anyways, we're going to cover general strategy in this video for every single one of them, as they have a similar loop on how to complete them entirely. Timestamps can be found in the description, while I do recommend you to watch from beginning till the end, as this will be your ultimate guide to prepare from A to Z, or progress from zero to hero, solo every single one of them, and get the most out of your runs. All right, so here we are. First off, where do we find Hollow Halls? How do you start your adventure? Well, what you're going to have to do is talk with Balthazar, the NPC inside your base who allows you to craft potions and magical gear, as this is where you can pick up the quest line to basically make your way to the very first Hollow Hall dungeon, which can be found in the very southwestern part of the world, exactly right there, close to a flame sanctum. You basically want to complete this entire run first, because at the very end, you'll be able to pick up the new collector NPC, which is essential to gain access to the following dungeons. The first one is the Revelwood Bone Key, for which you're going to need a nice amount of ectoplasm fragments and bones. I'm going to share a little bit more about ectoplasm fragment farming later in this video, but basically after you've completed that one, you will gain access to the Nomad Highlands Bone Key as well, for which you're going to need giant bones, even more ectoplasm fragments, and finally the Kindle Waste Bone Key, for which you're also going to need these resources. The secondary Hollow Halls dungeon can be found after unlocking the first one, which is right there, to the west, northwest basically, of the ancient spire of Revelwood. The quest which guides you to it will also ask you to get your hands on the ectoplasm press. This is what it looks like. We can browse through different recipes right here. The regular ectoplasm, greater ectoplasm, excellent ectoplasm, and also purified slime. Before you go and check out these places, I very much recommend you to gear up, get ready for the run, especially if you're playing solo. So first off, the essentials. I like to have the sneak attack right here to deal bonus damage when sneaking behind enemies, but also because then you can deal more damage when hitting enemies from behind. Also the essentials right here for gathering resources, especially this one right here, because this one allows you to pick up even more ectoplasm, which we're going to talk about in a second. But then we're going to focus all the melee tree right here. This is where you can boost your damage output super fast. In the warrior tree right here, as this will increase your melee attack damage by 10%, another 5% per attribute point right here. I also like to go with the blunt damage increments by 10, another 20%, even more critical strike chance right here, as well as more strength. So this is something you can do on a very low level alone. Well, if you have a couple more skill points, these are also going to make the run so much easier. Pick up the intelligence right here to basically go for the arcane deflection, gain some mana, because this is where you will have the blink, which replaces your dodge roll with a short teleport. This one not only allows you to deal damage to all the enemies inside, but it also allows you to escape from stuns. The heavy hitters, especially bosses, can stun you with certain attacks, so this can be extremely valuable valuable for your build, while right here we also have the evasion attack, which allows you to quickly dash to enemies, with also the battle heal. When dealing critical damage with your melee weapon, you will heal 5% of your maximum HP. What I think is amazing to pick up as well is this strength, as it will give you the jump attack, which deals 50% more weapon damage in a small blast radius. 
With the double jump, you can jump a secondary time, which helps you to dodge attacks, especially from bigger creatures, and further boost the damage of the jump attack, which we're going to cover in detail a little bit later. We've got more strength right here, so more melee damage, spawn HP orbs after defeating enemies with either a sneak attack or the merciless attack, if you decide to pick it up right here. But you primarily want to pick it up because of the backstab mastery, so you can deal even more damage against those enemies. Constitution for more HP, some strength right here, while I also like to have updraft so you can take all these as well. That's my level 25 build, but if you're lower level, just go with the essentials talked about, the blink, the evasion attack, also the double jump and the jump attack I think are amazing. Now, the build for my character itself. You probably already noticed the helmet which I wear, which is a pretty low level, while I just really like the looks of it. But this one, trust me, already does the job. So this one comes with critical strike chance. It can be even better if you have a Gloom Monarch helmet, as these come with better stats. But um, bonus HP, bonus mana, bonus damage against melee foes, I think all these are pretty awesome for a nice build. To make clearing the hollow halls easy mode, well, of course, you can also pick Pick up the Radiant Paladin set, which actually is a little bit better, but I simply don't like the looks of this one, so I'm not using it. While the boots and trousers actually come with some pretty decent stats useful for this build, you can actually make combinations of both. Well, I don't know, I just like to have more stamina and make my character look a little bit fancy while Reddit. And yeah, this basically proves that the armor you're wearing doesn't really have a huge impact on the build itself. Now, for the weapons themselves, this is pretty important as you can come across all sorts of items in the game with different types of weapon damage. So let's quickly check out my chest right here. I farmed a whole lot of them with my previous videos, but um, yeah, we have cutting damage, piercing damage, blunt damage, as well as poison damage. While if you upgrade items, you can further boost their stats. So let's quickly pick up a couple of these right here, which I actually found inside the hollow holes. In my opinion, these are going to be the absolute best to focus on because if you upgrade them right here you can find sacred this basically increases the damage against hollow enemies while this manable crusher especially if found at level 25 also comes with a ton of blunts which is amazing to deal with skeletons while the sword which we found earlier also comes with this sacred also damage against the hollows but this is primarily cutting and piercing damage so it's going to be less relevant I decided to upgrade my Fearsome Club to the maximum, as this one comes with Shock Magic damage, also Blunt damage, and even more Shock Magic. Also increases my Stam and Mana Regeneration, which is an amazing weapon to deal with all sorts of foes inside the Hollow Halls. Also want to have a two-handed mace for this specific build. Especially the Ignited Hammer right here, as this one comes with... 5 times plus 16 bonus blood damage if you upgrade it to the maximum. If we quickly check out my skill tree right here, you can see that specifically this tree focuses on dealing more damage with a two-handed weapon. And right here we can pick up Relentless, dealing critical damage with two-handed weapons increases your critical hit chance by another 10% for the next hit. Constitution, Heavy Specialization, which increases your attack speed with two-handed hammers, Barbarian, increased strength, and also the Blood Rage. When an enemy is killed within 10 meters with a melee weapon, any melee weapon, so also one-handers, the damage with melees, all melee weapons, also is increased by 20% for 10 seconds, which is an awesome one to deal with the foes inside the Hollow Halls even faster. So if we talk with a farmer, right here you can find all sorts of dishes, like strength dishes, increase your strength and constitution. We've got energy with a grilled yucca fruit, plus 20 stamina recharge, which is amazing. So I basically have three different ones equipped right here. The chicken soup, the rooibos tea, and also the grilled yucca fruit. Next to that, you also want to have a decent amount of bandages to patch up the damage you take in combat. And if necessary, you can even bring some health potions. So now that you're ready and equipped for battle, let's say, let's talk about some strategies, how you can farm the hollow halls and make these runs super fast and efficient so you don't have to waste a lot of time clearing the packs, especially with this build, because trust me, it's going to be easy mode. 
The first rooms of each Hollow Hall's dungeon primarily contain a whole lot of trash mobs, like smaller skeletons, sometimes accompanied by some zombie or undead dogs and those veteran skeletons, which come with some pretty scary scythe weapons. Don't worry, as with one-handed mace and shield, you can easily block the incoming damage and land a couple quick swings to deal with the weaker mobs, while what I think is the easiest way to clear the big packs instantly is to perform a single or double jump and land that jump attack with the two-handed mace. This allows you to take him out super fast, while every time when you critical hit, you will also heal while you're at it. So you will not only slay the mobs, but you will also have more survivability while dealing damage. This build simply encourages you to clear mobs fast, as this will make everything so much easier. Once you've taken one down, you will increase your damage with the Blood Rage. And the more damage you deal to enemies, the more chances you have of critical striking. Heal yourself with the talents talked about earlier. So you want to be fighting 24-7 until you reach the end of the dungeon. Some rooms or halls also come with a barrier for which you're going to have to either collect runes in the room or you're gonna have to deal with a couple enemies which have the green rune icon hovering above their heads. In the lower level hollow halls, you primarily have to deal with trash mobs with these runes over their heads, while later, once you've gathered all the runes and taken down those mobs, the barrier will go away and you can advance to the next room. Some quick tips about the Cyclops boss encounter, as these can be pretty tricky to deal with, especially my first runs. Even on the lowest level, I actually got wrecked by this guy because his damage is very scary. But once you know the strategy, you can take him out with ease. So you simply want to run to this guy as quick as possible. He has a couple abilities which he costs when you fight close to him. One of those is the stomp, which you can easily dash away from with the blink from this build, while another one is where he summons this poison floor, which you also want to teleport away from as quick as possible. It not only deals damage, but it also stuns you, which can be deadly if you don't have stamina ready to use your glider. If you do happen to get stand by his stomp you can always use the blink what's really nice about this build is that it allows you to dance around him constantly deal backstab damage which hits so much harder makes clearing these mobs easier while this also prevents you from taking damage primarily when he takes out his sword because this is the heaviest hitting damage basically you want to be careful for Especially in the final dungeon in the Kindle Wastes area, you have to deal with two Cyclops in one room, as well as a fell Sickle Scythe. I honestly was a little bit scared for this one. Well, if you're just standing right in front of it and swing that mace, you'll be able to take it down in no time. It's very important you focus on ectoplasm farming, the ectoplasm crystals and shards, which drop basically from all the mobs you clear inside this dungeon. But there is a much faster and more efficient way to farm this resource if you focus on the bone piles that emit light, as if you mine these blocks, you will find the ectoplasm fragments so much faster, especially if you also picked up the miner right here, which gives you a 10% chance to gain additional resources when mining away these blocks. You can easily get 50 to 100 in especially the bigger nodes, which you can come across every now and then as well. If we quickly check out the chest right here once again, especially the Manable Crusher, I think is going to be an amazing one to pick up if you want to make these runs even more efficient. As if we quickly visit the blacksmith and fully upgrade his weapon, as you can see, this one comes with two times the sacred. 10% more damage against the hollow enemies, some ice magic damage, and also on hit leech 5 damage as HP. This so far is the absolute best weapon or mace I found so far to make these farming runs a lot more efficient as it comes with amazing bonuses to deal with the hollow enemies faster. All right, so there you have it, your ultimate guide on getting ready for the hollow halls and make these farming runs super fast and efficient. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, already very much appreciate it. Not only will you help out the channel with it, but also other people who are searching for a guide like this one. Check out G Portal with my link in the description down below to get a sweet discount on servers. And yes, if you have more questions, maybe suggestions for this build or for future videos, you're always very welcome to leave those in the comments down below as well. I'm always happy to help and yeah, 
If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as a lot more is shrouded is coming your way. Right now though, it's 4am out. I want to wish you an amazing day. Best of luck with the Hollow Hall farming runs. I'll check you guys in the next video or live stream. Peace.